Hi everyone and welcome to this week's quick fix which we're actually going to paint we're going to paint a flower um, and it's a new geranium that I've come across called the Roseanne geranium and it's just gorgeous and we're just going to treat this as a little bit of um, a, a little bit of nature journaling today so uh, we're going to begin by using some lovely purpley tones I've got this imperial purple from Daniel Smith watercolor and I'm going to paint the five petals on this geranium with quite a dilute amount of color to begin with um, so I'm going to paint in with my size 2 brush I'm going to paint in uh, I've got one and then we can sort of pop in another one there so the little circle in the middle is where we anchor the petals into I want to paint these so that the petals don't sort of bleed into one another so I'm going to just paint these two petals first and then we can find space for the others once these have dried but yeah so we're going to paint them nice and dilute and then I'm going to take some stronger color and I'm just going to drop it in look at that beautiful and the color we want the color to come down quite far but we want to just trust that it's going to do that without us messing around with it too much so that's why we wait for the petals to be nice and damp to put that color in but then we leave them be whilst we wait for them to dry to paint in the other ones but there is always something we can be doing whilst we're waiting for one part of our watercolour painting to dry. So I've mixed up green gold and sap green and I'm now going to place in these rather amazing leaves of the geranium. So I'm using a size 4 brush and I'm using the pointed tips of the brush to create these beautiful serrated edge sort of star shaped leaves so by painting in the central one and then we can come around the side and shape it up a little bit more and then coming down the middle and that nice big central one And while it's still just a little bit wet, I'm going to run just a little bit of sap green in the middle and let it spread out. So I painted in two more petals once those ones are dried and I've just waited a little bit longer and I can now place in the final petal. So that's why it's so important to have that little circle to anchor everything in the middle. It just really helps you create really nicely anchored flowers. There we go. For the stems, I think a rigger brush might be nice because the stems are quite stems are quite slender. So I've got the uh, yellowy greeny mix we had for the leaves and I'm just going to begin by traveling up the stem the main stem there's um there's this extra branch up here which we're going to have a few buds on so I'm just going to have 
two little branches coming off there and just quickly fill that one in. So yeah, it's a lovely slender stem. Um, but there is a little bit of sort of purpley pink running through the stem, I noticed. So what I'm going to do is mix a bit of brown, burnt sienna, permanent rose and imperial purple together just to get a nice sort of deep, sort of little woody, kind of a woody pinky colour. And just to put just a few tiny little sepally leaves or bracts at some of these joins and then up here as well. It doesn't in fact it's quite good if you get a little blend there because it's all nice nicely ties into one another. And now with my size two brush I'm gonna create a little teardrop I'm going to get a bit of sap green and I'm just going to extend it down like that. So we've got all our basic washes in now so we want to just let that dry 100% and then we'll put in a bit of detail. It's time for some detail and that wonderful mixture we've got here of permanent rose, burnt sienna and imperial purple is going to be perfect for the very little fine petal veins that can be found in a roseanne geranium. So just paint fine lines out from the centre you haven't got a rigger brush you can get one in my shop they're rather wonderful the rigger brush is also great for leaf lines so you'll see what I've done there just with sap green I do a central one and then just curl the veins out from the middle It's also great for just adding a little bit of darkness to the underside of the stems. It's pretty brilliant. So at this point I'm going to rub out the pencil and then we'll just go back in for one last little bit of extra detail. The geranium, this Roseanne geranium has a really cool sort of deep pink coloured filament coming out from the centre of the flower so just a little bit of permanent rose, alizar and crimson mix and just with a small brush, I mean this is a size zero, it's not even that tiny in the grand scheme of things. Just curling out from the middle. And while that dries, I'm just going to get a bit of Payne's Grey, mix it into the stem mix we had and the leaf mix, and just add just a little bit extra. A little bit extra detail on the leaf with this little bit of shadow. Because the leaves have a lot of texture in them and it can be nice just to get a little bit more of that sense of a shape.
it's all these little things that you sort of look at a piece and go yep it's finished and then I come in and say no it's not you could always do this you could always do that uh, but I think that's the difference in creating flowers in the new botanical painting style which I feel like is a style I've developed for myself and for you guys um, which is all about trying to capture the essence of the flower or the plant or whatever um, in an accurate manner but not spending months and months and months on a single piece in the true botanical painting style okay and then just to finish off a little bit of Payne's Grey for the anthers and there we have a Roseanne Geranium.